Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and this is Space Engine. Here we are, looking at the familiar, our home, Earth. And as we gaze up into the sky, there too we can see the familiar, but there is also something more, a source of mystery, the great wonder of the ages. A sky then filled with many places that we know and recognize. The Pleiades star cluster there, just above Earth, and to the left, Barnard's Loop and the constellation of Orion. Collectively, as a people, as we stand here upon the only world we have ever known, looking up at this sky, everything we witnessed is forever intertwined with the history of humanity. Our dreams, our myths, our future. Perhaps no object in the night sky has inspired as many stories as our nearest neighbor, our very own moon. And even today, its surface features retain the names of our ancient ancestors, the seas of tranquility, the sea of serenity, the bay of honor, the bay of trust. And did those in our past ever once wonder that perhaps one day we would set foot upon this moon, only to never return? Maybe then our hearts are set upon a different world, a world which for the longest time we'd thought to harbor life yet a world whose name harbors the very real possibility of strife, Mars, the god of war, and somewhat paradoxically, the guardian of agriculture. This then is the target of mankind's next great foray into the stars, and perhaps one day, a future homeworld. Even at this vast distance of 225 million kilometers, the surface features of Mars hold for some a personal value perhaps of recognizable locations, of perhaps a place of future dreams, and maybe a place upon which we as a race have already made our mark. And just as Mars in comparison to Earth is relatively diminutive, here too the moons of Mars are also very small, Phobos and Demios. With circumferences of just 43 miles and 24 miles respectively, there are many towns on Earth which easily outsize these stellar objects. Our solar system is full of many wonders which have long caught our imagination. Yet, beyond the edges of our system, within the depths of the galaxy, are many other locations which have bonds just as strong. Here is the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, a bright star constellation visible from Earth with the naked eye. These are seven beautiful stars. Maya, Electra, Alcyone, Tiergeti, Astrope, Selino and Merope. And this star cluster forms a point on the constellation of Taurus. And now, as we move through this beautiful nebula, we head towards the giant blue star of Maya. For anyone that's used a space engine, you'll know that its beauty lies in the fact that it can model an entire universe. Out here, around this star, we can see numerous planets, and each of these we can visit. And that is something we're going to do right now. A world very close to its parent star. A world that is entirely lifeless, but nonetheless a world that is full of beauty. For some, this is what they imagine when they look up at the night sky. The world they dream of. The world they envision. Worlds that for us are entirely out of reach. And for now at least, we lack even the ability to see. Yet here, Within the virtual realm of our computer, they are strikingly realized. And although this world is extremely bright due to its proximity to the star, upon closer inspection we get to appreciate just a glimpse of its detail as we pass through this planet's atmosphere. As with the worlds of our own solar system, out here too these many worlds possess their own moons. And on occasion the procedural algorithms of Space Engine and the universe itself perhaps conspire to make these moons rather unusual. In the background there, you can see the galactic core of our own Milky Way. Keep that in mind because very soon we'll be headed in that very direction. And as we approach this moon of Maya, it's all too easy to be captivated by the amazing colors here. A rock then, that looks almost like some type of amazing precious gem. And if we had the means, we could maybe even drive or walk around on this surface. 
Beyond the horizon, we can see the blue backdrop of the Pleiades Nebula. But this is only one of many nebula within our galaxy. Of course, one of the more famed is the Orion Nebula, situated within Barnard's Loop, home to the Horsehead Nebula, the Witchhead Nebula, as well as the Running Man Nebula. Here, 1600 light years away from Earth, we can find Orion, the ancient huntsman placed here by Zeus in a vain attempt to chase the Pleiades sisters across the night sky. And almost as if in a form of galactic irony, the Orion Nebula is a place of extreme fertility, a stellar nursery, the birthplace of many stars. And once again, we find ourselves here facing the galactic core, a place of extremely dense star clusters, many millions of stars, very, very bright, very, very hot. And as we enter this center here, things become so bright that we can barely see. And at the very center is Sagittarius A, a supermassive black hole, by some measurements to be 14 million miles across, with a lower mass of 40,000 of our suns. Here then, at the very heart of our galaxy, is a chaotic place of both creation and destruction, a place where stars are destroyed and born. As we move away from the accretion disk, we can appreciate the true size of Sagittarius A. The radio mission size said to be 93 million miles across, or that of the orbit of Earth around the Sun. Once again, returning to the normal exposure of the camera, we get to see just how bright the core of the galaxy is. And pulling away, we leave our galaxy, once and for all, seeing our home, the Milky Way. 100,000 light years across and containing many hundreds of billions of stars from this vantage point, it's hard to imagine that we are the only peoples living here. The big question then, could it be home to many others? A home containing billions upon billions of worlds, billions upon billions of stars, and yet this galaxy is not alone. Out there is a vast array of galaxies, in fact, perhaps more galaxies than can possibly be counted. Each dot here represents a, a unique galaxy, and this one is Andromeda, our closest neighbor. A galaxy much like our own, containing billions upon billions of stars and worlds, and maybe here, lost somewhere among this unfathomable vastness, is another people, looking up at that distant galaxy, the Milky Way, wondering if there is life. And this galaxy, Andromeda, visible from Earth, was once thought to be a nebula called the Andromeda Nebula. In ancient mythology, the princess Andromeda was chained to a rock to be slayed by a monster, only to be saved by the hero Perseus. At a distance of two and a half million light years, one day Andromeda will be a much more than our neighbor, for it is on a collision course with our own galaxy, and at a distant point in the future, four billion years hence, the Andromeda Galaxy and the Milky Way will become one. For any life existing within these galaxies at that point, it's thought that the transition will be fairly harmless due to the vast distances between all stars. And perhaps I'm a little envious of that far future species that would be able to look up at the night sky and for a brief period at least on the cosmic scale, we'd be able to see not one, but two galactic cores. Far away then, within the confines of another galaxy, Upon the surface of this boiling, rocky world far too close to its sun, I will leave you to consider the possibilities of Space Engine. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.